Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to swatch the Paul Rubens Guacai paints. These 12 here that I got in my little accidental art haul the other day. And I've done a little bit of research and I've tried as best as I can, could, to match the colors from what I found online with the ones I had. This is why I swatched them out up here to just be, so I just be able to tell what, what the colors are. But I mean, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be exact. So from what I've seen, this here might be rattan yellow and I've no pigment information for you whatsoever. So I'll just, Look at them as they are. This is dark red, even though I'd say it's an orange, but you know. It is a very red leaning orange, but I would still call it more. If I would call it red, I would call it a light red, not a dark red, but you know. You do you, Paul Rubens, I guess. I think sometimes things might get lost in translation a little bit. I have painted with these, not with all of them, but with some of them a little bit. This is just red, which you know, no argument there. So I've painted with some of these colors a little bit, but not very much. So I can't really make any statements about how much I like them or not yet. But I did a little paint doodle with, I think this azure blue. I used some of the azure blue and did I use any of the others? I'm not sure. That was, that turned out well, and I mixed it with some other paints and those worked well together as well. I think those are just gonna be, I've decided I will actually keep them. Surprise, surprise. But they're just like for playing around. This is purple. And I feel fairly confident in saying this is probably dioxazine purple the pigment in there. Unless there's also some dye in there, but it looks like a diox purple, doesn't it? And they are they are meant to be Chinese style watercolor, so they're not as transparent as you would expect. And you can see they do dry a little bit chalky. I hope you can actually see that raw up there. But if not, you won't be able to see it when these dry. And some of these colors did have a bit of binder separation where the binder was come bubbling out. And I haven't noticed the smell. That's one of the things that, that comes up a lot about these, that they're smelly. I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary there. But I've had binder separation with this blue, for instance. There was quite a bit of binder separation. and. I thought this would be ultramarine blue, but looking from the swatches, this is probably what they call just blue. Even though there's definitely, it definitely looks like there's some granulation there. And the binder separation would also, it's granulating paints tend to separate much more than non-granulating paints because of the particle size of the pigment and things like that. So then here's the azure blue and well, okay, this one does have a little bit of a smell to it, but it's more like a smell that I associate with mixing white and seeing this is this is so opaque. This certainly looks like there's it's got there's some opaque white in there, and like some mixing white gouache has a smell like this paint to it as well. And you can see up here, especially, this is a fairly opaque one. But that said, if you water it down quite a bit and mix it with uh, normal traditional watercolors, 
transparent watercolors you get some transparency to it so then this green which i thought looked like phalo green is apparently mineral green that's what they call it it is it, this one looks quite transparent and it really it looks like a phalo green to me but i guess again whatever So then this one is mineral green. And I'm wondering if this is more based on phalo green yellow shade, PG36, maybe, because this seems, it certainly seems a bit greener and this is a Maybe a touch more opaque, but not really. I'm not sure. Oh, I guess we'll see how these dry. And then this next one is just called green, but this certainly looks like a phalo green. I'm not sure which one. To be honest, I find it sometimes, sometimes I find it difficult to tell with the, the white, but it looks almost more like a, a phalo green. Yellow shade of PG36 again with white. And certainly up here in the mask tone swatch, this was a little bit, there was a little bit of binder separation with this one as well, actually. Well, there's something going on, so the bit that I put out is not as strong as it could be. Hang on, I've got the tube line right here. I'll see if I can get it a bit stronger. Here, that's a bit better. So there's some binder separation going on. And this as well, has a similar smell to this one so i think this is again the, the mixing the white that they've mixed in with this because this certainly well chalk maybe it's chalk they're mixing in because it's supposed to be like traditional chinese paint but it smells as i said it smells like mixing white the smell says mixing white to me then we've got mineral yellow which looks like a not very exciting yellow ochre or again it's probably with this one i could see how they maybe mix if there's chalk mixed in into the paint how it would end up dull and unexciting like this i do like yellow ochre usually when this one is a bit it's a bit meh so then Oh, what happened to my ochre? So this is burnt sienna, according to the information I found online, even though, I mean, let's be fair. Would you call this burnt sienna? I wouldn't. It's more like a Van Dyke brown or burnt umber or something like that, but I wouldn't call it burnt sienna. It's way too dark and the one that I thought was burnt sienna and that must have been um, I think the problem I have here is that the burnt sienna swatch that I put out got completely obliterated by yeah that's too dark I think with the with the um this one there was again some binder separation so um hang on I think it's this one so I just got that straight from the tube. That's horrible. It's not what you're supposed to do. But so, and I think this is supposed to be just ochre. As I said, take all of these with a grain of salt. It's I color match them using the swatches from the internet. So it's. And there were 24, there were 24 swatches and I only have 12 paints, so... Not gonna be exact, is it? Can I take this off? No, not really. Left it too long. So I'll pull them down a little bit, so now you'll definitely be able to see that top roll. So these two are really opaque, certainly here in mustone, you can see. 
this one is fairly opaque as well. The other ones, you can uh, certainly when you water them down, you can get them a little bit more like traditional watercolor, but they do behave. I think they do behave a little bit differently from the little that I've used them. But they will be fun to play around with and uh, just going to be paint that I just use to mess around and see what I can do with it. Do let me know if you have these paints and how you use them. It would be interesting to know and how you like them. But yeah, so far, after not having really painted with them, I do think they're actually quite fun to use, even if they're a bit different. I have actually painted with my Daniel Smith paints. I don't know if you can see them there up there. No, you can definitely see them. And I put the old Rubens paints back on, because that's what this is supposed to be about. And I do really like them. The Daniel Smith ones. So I'm still definitely glad with this haul, because as I said, in that video the daniel smith ones alone were worth the price and these are just bonus for playing around with and having some fun so thank you very much for watching please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel and i will see you in the next one thank you for watching bye bye now bye